So far in chapter 16, we've taken a look at a number of experiments that led Watson and Crick to their identification of the structure of DNA. But when Watson and Crick finished their paper, they closed it with this line. It has not escaped our notice that a specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. And this was an opening for a whole new set of experiments to actually understand how the structure of DNA led to this function of copying. Now Watson and Crick in a second paper said this, Our new model for deoxyribonucleic acid is in effect a pair of templates, each of which is complementary to the other. So based upon Watson and Crick's structure of DNA, let's take a look at one last classic experiment that gets at the model by which that structure leads to the function of DNA replication. At the time, there were three different potential models for DNA replication. Those are listed here as the conservative, the semi-conservative, or the dispersive models. Now first, let's take a look at the method or the experiments that were done by Messelson and Stahl that definitively defined the model for DNA replication. In this particular experiment, bacteria were grown in a culture containing N15, or a heavy version of nitrogen, an isotope of nitrogen containing an additional neutron. The bacteria that were grown in this culture that had incorporated N15 into their DNA bases, the nitrogenous bases of the nucleotides, were transferred to a culture containing only N14. So what this means is that whenever the bacteria replicated, which was about every 30 minutes, they would be incorporating N14 into their DNA molecules rather than N15. In that way, it changes the nature of the DNA. What aspect of the DNA does it change? Only its weight. As we know that isotopes do not change the functionality of the molecules in which they are incorporated. So this change from N15 to N14 only changed the weight of the DNA molecule. So as it says here, after the bacteria were given ample time to reproduce, which is only 20 minutes after an actively grown culture has moved to N14, the DNA sample was, was isolated from from the bacteria and the DNA was centrifuged. And what you see is that there was a single band. So what does this single band mean? And that's what we're going to take a look at in just a moment. But after it was given an opportunity to reproduce twice, that is after 40 minutes, there would have been two bands found. And this was the evidence that Messelson and Stahl needed in order to determine that it indeed was the semi-conservative model. Let's take a quick look at the predictions for each of the three possible models of DNA replication. Remember that the dark blue represents N15, the light blue represents N14. There are three models, the conservative, the semi-conservative, and the dispersive models. Looking first at the conservative model, we see that we have bacteria growing in N15, so all the DNA contains only nitrogen 15. If during the transfer of the DNA, get a pen here, to the light version, this is the transfer, to the light version, the conservative model suggests that the two DNA strands, original DNA strands, are separated, copied, and then come back together where the new strands that were made from the template are then joined. In the semi-conservative model, during that first transfer to N15, suggests that the two original N15 strands are separated, as shown here, and as shown here, and new strands are made on each of those that are strands that are complementary. The dispersive model indicates that when the two original N15 strands are separated from each other. Okay? They are copied, not whole like in the semi-conservative model, but in pieces. 
And so in the end, you end up with two daughter molecules, each containing some old strand, dark blue, and some new strand, the light blue. What I'd like you to do is to predict what you think you would see after completing the same experiment as Messelson and Stahl. Let's start with just the first replication. After just one replication, if you were to harvest the DNA from the bacteria now growing in N14, what would you expect to see? So for example, if we looked at the conservative model first, here's our test tube. We would expect to see one band of N15, N15, which we call our heavy band, and we would expect to see another band that's lighter, containing only N14, N14. What I'd like you to do is to take a moment and do the same for both the semi-conservative and the dispersive model. After just one round of replication, how many bands would you would expect to see, and approximately where would you expect to find them? Let's take a look at what each of us got by trying to predict the outcome of this experiment. First, if we again look at the conservative model, we would expect two bands, one representing the N14-N14 daughter molecule and the other representing the N15-N15 daughter molecule. In the semi-conservative model, we would expect there to be only one band because each daughter molecule is a mixture or hybrid of an N14 and an N15 strands. So we would expect to see only one band. And the same is true of the dispersive model because as you can see from the picture and as you might imagine from the concept is that each daughter molecule is an equal mixture more or less of N14 and N15. So we would expect there to be just one band for the dispersive model as well. Well what did Messelson and Stahl really see? Well in fact what they saw was just one band. They saw one band in there after the first round of replication. So that eliminated the conservative model. Either the semi-conservative or the dispersive model was the correct one. In order to differentiate between these two, they needed to do a second round of replication. And so what I would like you to do is to do the same. Predict what you would expect to see in the test tube after the second replication. And so what did you predict to happen after two rounds of replication? If we use a conservative model as a demonstration purpose, what we might expect to see is two bands. One band containing the N14, N14 molecules, and another band containing the original N15, N15 parent molecules. In the semi-conservative model, we would predict to see two bands. One representing the N14, N14 molecules, and another containing just the N14, N15 molecules. In the dispersive model, we would predict to see just one band. One band containing the N14, N15 dispersed equally. What is it that Meselson and Stahl really saw? What they really saw was two bands. One band representing the N14, N14, and another band representing the N14, N15 molecules after two rounds of replication. So what I'd like you to do is to predict what you would see after three rounds of replication in each of these different models. Given the results of the Messelson-Stahl experiment, all models moving forward that explained how DNA replication actually happened needed to fit within the context of the semi-conservative model. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at DNA replication and the very specific mechanisms that allow for semi-conservative replication to take place.